Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and today we are talking research proposals. Probably one of the most asked questions that I get, how do you write a strong research proposal? Now, a proposal is probably one of the most important documents that you will write before actually starting your PhD or your research program. It defines a question and describes the approach that you are going to take to answer that question. It also places your work within the realm of the research that's currently out there and shows sort of what your kind of approach is for. I know what works and what doesn't work. I have edited hundreds of research proposals that have been sent to me via the pagedoctor.com which is my academic consultancy. And I've marked proposals that have passed and gone through to top universities all around the world and those that haven't. And I can clearly tell you what needs to be included, what should definitely not be included, and sort of what the structure of a research proposal should be. Without a proposal, there is no plan. And without a plan, there is no project. That is the key thing to take away. You need a proposal. If you're watching this video, you're probably stuck. You're probably thinking, well, okay, I have to write a proposal. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to do this. So by the end of today's video, you will walk away with a draft outline or a rough outline of a proposal and you'll be able to work on that and then possibly submit that to us at the page doctor to then be able to clean up and to tailor that proposal to make sure that you get accepted into the program that you desire. I post every Wednesday and every Sunday, so don't forget to press the subscribe button right now while you're waiting to see more from me and content just like this. The structure of a research proposal includes eight different sections and is a approximately 2,000 to about 2,500 words maximum. Remember that number. It should never be too short, but also shouldn't be too long. So it includes the following sections. A title, an abstract, research background, research questions, the research methods, I guess that's your approach, the significance, a timeline of your proposed project, and lastly, a bibliography or a reference list. So I'm going to be showing and breaking down each of those sections for you and telling you what should be included in each of those parts. So starting off with your title. Now when thinking about your title, think about what keywords define your project. If someone were to search for your work, what keywords would they have to look for in order to identify your particular project? How would you describe your research? What are the terms that you need to include to be able to say, right, this is the work that I'm doing? Remember that this is the one section I would say that will definitely change. The title that you propose in the beginning will be revised, kind of changed as you go along depending on direction that your project takes in the end. So if, you know, don't feel like it's the title that you're going to graduate with, because it definitely isn't. Don't feel pressurized to develop the best title ever because like I said, it's definitely going to change. The second section is your abstract. Now, your abstract, I've talked about quite a bit before. The abstract is traditionally used to summarize your research, talk about the intent, the research question and the method that you took and then the results and talk about the discussion. But obviously in this case, you're discussing a proposed research, so you haven't actually done it yet. So in this case, the abstract is very short, around 100 words, and it's a statement that has highlights the issue that you are concerned with and that you are going to be kind of discussing in this proposal. So the third section is your research background. Now this is a bit like a literature review, but a bit more concise than a traditional literature review. This sets the context for the research proposal. What literature are you basing this research on? You should have done a lot of reading to understand where your work is going to fit into the field. And that is where you're going to describe what that field is. What information does the reader need to to know to understand your field? What information does the reader need to know to know, I guess, what gap there is in the literature? The most important consideration here is trying to think about the current debates that are in the literature. What is the current state of knowledge? What do people say about your topic? Is there sort of one side that says this is happening and the other side saying that's happening? What is the stance that you are taking concerning the current debate in literature? That is essentially what you are trying to summarize within the research background. This should be a really concise section where you're highlighting the top papers that are relevant for your topic. Don't underestimate the importance of this section. You know, you're submitting this to another expert in the field, so they'll know what papers and what literature is the most important, and they'll know whether you've done the most exhaustive reading or not. The fourth section is your research questions. Now, this is essentially defining what it is that you are seeking out with this research. What are the central aims that run through your study? Like I said, you need to really think about where your research fits 
fit into the field, whether your questions are feasible. Have they been answered before? If yes, that's not an original study. It needs to provide new information to the field, a new sort of insight, a new direction, a new consideration. You should really have one or two main questions and then sort of a couple of sub questions that feed into answering that main overarching question. The next section and probably the most bulkiest and most important section is the research method or the methodology section. And here you're actually defining your approach. Now you've said what the issue is, you've said the gap in knowledge, you've said what you want to like how you're going to do it. Now you need to define the methods. How exactly are you planning on determining the answer to the question of your research? You need to justify everything in this section. Why have you chosen quantitative over qualitative? Or why have you chosen a mixed method? Why have you chosen this cell type? Why have you chosen any method that you discuss? You need to say why you've chosen it and really justify the choices that you make. Like I said, I think this is probably the most weighty section and the section you should consider the most as it can determine the success of your project. It's all well and good to say we don't understand how this thing happens. If you don't have a method to back that up or a method that you know would actually work and is feasible, then your projects can't run. So it's important to have considered the methods very, very well. You also want to consider any limitations and I think people tend to miss this bit out. They don't say what the issues and challenges are that they could be faced. And I think people miss this out because they think they don't want to say there could be an issue here. But actually, if you're trying to acquire data from a cell type that's quite rare or quite hard, or if you're trying to get some interviews from people who have in a rural area, for example, you're going to be faced with challenges and it's naive to assume that you won't. So it's important that you say, right, these are the challenges that I could be faced with and this is how I'm planning to overcome them. This shows that you've got the correct sort of research mindset where you're considering challenges, you're considering outcomes, you're considering alternative options because let me tell you, in research, nothing goes to plan, nothing. So it's important that you know, you've got that mindset where you're thinking about the plan B. Lastly, in this part, you also want to think about analysis. So, you know, you're doing a questionnaire, a qualitative analysis. How are you going to be analyzing that? Are you analyzing that through a thematic topic? Are you analyzing that through t-test? Are you analyzing, like, how are you planning to analyze your data? This is important because it means that you've considered the next step. It's all well and good to have a thousand questionnaires filled out, but how are you then planning to collate that data? How are you then planning to analyze that data and, and have those final results and final comments? Ultimately, remember that the research proposal is purely just a proposal. You are not meant to be an expert. You are not meant to know all the answers, but you are meant to have considered and looked at the research that's out there and thought about what ways have people done this before? How could I approach this situation? You will then have the option, you know, if you get accepted to discuss this in further detail and, you know, kind of build on that initial plan. But it is important that you've brought that independent thought to the table to show that you are a suitable and strong candidate. The sixth is significance. Why is this work significant? Why is this work a project that the supervisor should take on? How is your work original? How does your work stand out from all the work that's out there before? What new thing are you bringing to the table? And also, how does the work build on what we already know? So to be able to say that this work is significant, you need to say, right, we know this thing and I'm going to be building on this thing. And then that's going to be able to support future work. So why is your work what work that you think people are going to be interested in and is work that is significant in the general field that you're interested in. Last, well almost last, penultimate but definitely not least, is a timeline. Again I find this gets forgotten about quite a bit but you know your project is a PhD project in the UK anyway, it's three to four years. So what is that timeline that you are planning to hopefully uphold? The first year could be maybe doing some preliminary studies, it could be recruiting the participants, it could be writing up the questionnaire, doing some reading. The second year could be actually you know running those interviews, third year could be the analysis or reading interviews or whatever it is that you choose to do. So that's what you want. You want to think about what that timeline could be. Now again, this is going to be, it's, it's going to change 110%. I can guarantee you that right now. But it, again, it shows that you've thought about kind of timelines. Things might not go to plan. If they don't, I'll do this instead. This could happen. If not, this is going to happen. This is going to happen first, then that's going to happen. You want a timeline. It shows you've considered your methods, considered your approach and considered how long of time 
time it might actually take you. Last but definitely not least is a bibliography. Here you want to detail the key pieces of work and the key literature that your work is based on. So I would probably limit this to five to ten, ten maximum. What are the literature that you, for example, read and then based your questions on? Where was a gap in what you read and then thought, ah, I need to answer that. What was that paper? What papers, let's say I had to read your review and I knew nothing about your topic, what five to ten papers would I have to read to understand the field, then understand how your work is going to add to that field and build on that field and give that substance? That is what you need to think. Again, remember that the lecturer or the professor, the supervisor that you're applying to will be an expert in that field. And so do consider the amount of reading that you've done and make sure that you've done enough to be able to have picked out what those papers are. So I really hope that you guys found this useful. This is such a frequently asked question. How do you write a proposal? But it really is, I would say this is not a difficult thing to write at all, especially if you know your literature and you know sort of the question that you're thinking about writing. It's a very, very you know simple, structured, consistently structured piece of document. So if you do want me to edit it and you do want someone to take a look at it professionally to make sure that you are on track and you've answered all of those questions correctly, then do send it forward to the pagedoctor.com for an edit. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me. I post every Wednesday and Sunday and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.